Hello, everybody. How are you doing? While you enjoy your lunch today, we're going to give you a presentation. Bluffer's Guide to Customizing the 2016 Blackboard Theme. And um, I'm Matthew Deeprose, I'm the VLE Manager at the University of Southampton. I'm with Esther Munoz from eLearning Media. You've probably seen her amazing posts on the Blackboard Community site. And we're ably assisted by my colleague Sam Cole, who's a VLE specialist at the University of Southampton. So, why are we giving this talk? So, customizing the 2016 theme is probably the most popular topic on the Blackboard community site right now. And um, a couple of months ago, in a moment of desperation, asking for help from my fellow members of the community, like Esther and Kevin, I said, hey, if, if you can help us to get something going, get something actually working, then I'd be very happy to give a talk at the TLC this year about customizing the theme. And as soon as I wrote up that message, Esther messaged me and said, hey, I'll help you out too. So we're going to do little different parts as we go through the presentation. And uh, hopefully, we're going to be able to take you from um, knowing nothing necessarily about the theme to becoming an innovator with the 2016 theme. So there is lots of help and material on the community site, but it can be quite difficult uh, to make your way around and to find. And since we've been doing this, having started from scratch with no prior knowledge of customizing the theme a couple of months ago, um, this talk is aimed particularly at anyone who's not sure how to get started or has gone to the 2016 theme but wants to know how to customize it so that we can show you four steps to take you from a bluffer to an innovator, including top tips from experts in their field from around the community site. And uh, by the end of this talk, you should feel confident at having a go at customizing the 2016 theme. Now, just a few bits of admin. This presentation contains some animations. If you are photosensitive, please be aware that there will be things on the screen moving around and so on, so just please be aware of that. Where we provide demonstrations, we're using the 2016 original uh, theme with no customization so that later on you'll be able to follow it back and do exactly what we've done in your environment. And of course, before making any changes, take a backup, make sure you know what you're doing, and uh, be, re be prepared, do it in dev first, etc. Now, everything that we cover today, including the slides, you can download from the website go.sotten.ac.uk slash bb. That address appears at the bottom of almost every slide, and I'll be uh, tweeting that later on as well. From there, you can find um, lots of details. Please save your questions until the end, and um, be aware that this is the abridged version of the talk. We had so much uh, content, and we really wanted to make it uh, as useful as possible for everyone in the Blackboard community that we really have put everything but the kitchen sink into this presentation. Where you see a green dot is telling you that there will be more material available in the full version of the presentation online. So what is the 2016 theme? Um, according to the, the Blackboard help pages here, it's the uh, the modern version of the Blackboard user interface. And it's an optional theme that will give you uh, an improved experience for mobile users. And there's several important notes to that. This is about the original experience, not ultra. Course themes will, but won't be supported in the 2016 theme. And also buttons aren't supported. What are course themes? Who remembers these? For some, there'll be a distant memory. For some, they still have them. My favorite one is the one with the football. I also like the ECG uh, one, it's fantastic. And who doesn't love these buttons? Um, there are many uh, instructors who still really like using these buttons, but they're not supported in the 2016 theme. Now, at Southampton, we'd previously only used the GUI-based configuration options for the theme. So um, we try to avoid unnecessary complexity. And our customers, our instructors, they were used to choosing their course colors 
and so on. That was very important to them. So we wanted to implement the 2016 theme based on that practice. And you might have seen this slide before from an earlier Blackboard roadmap. Um, by the Q2 2018, Q4 2018, development was expected to be roughly complete. So we thought that's the time when we can go and start looking at that. And in particular, from Q2 2018, they announced that instructors would be able to choose their own course colors, which hadn't previously been possible in the course menu, and that administrators would be able to set the color scheme using um, the, the admin interface, like you can do with the 2012 theme. Who's using the 2016 theme? Put your hand up. So maybe about a quarter, a third of the audience are using it. Okay, fantastic. Now I'm going to hand over to Sam. Hello, can everyone hear me? Okay, great. So, looking at how we started, um, initially we didn't actually want to really get involved in any of the, the CSS customizations. So we've always just done whatever we can do through the, the user interface. Um, but back in March, uh, the picture there shows Matt and I and another colleague from Southampton on Dress Down Friday looking very frustrated because uh, we found out there weren't really enough changes that we could make to the colors that we wanted to make through the user interface. Um, further, we found that there were certain design choices in the 2016 theme that we hadn't really seen or weren't familiar with from the 2012 theme. So the issue of having, well, it's not an issue, but having purple everywhere didn't really work for us, um, and we didn't want to, to have that. We also found that there were several problems, bugs, uh, other issues with the, the 2016 theme that kind of made it inevitable to us that we would have to do some, some customizations. So we were kind of pushed down that road anyway, regardless of whether we wanted to make further changes. So some of the examples of um, what we'd call kind of the, the bugs or the issues. First of all, if you've got a, a course menu with a white background, we found that anyone that's used subheaders those subheaders were, were appearing in white and were effectively disappearing. And we've got in the middle, we've got a course map, which when you popped it out, it had that, that default kind of dark gray. I'm not sure what the exact name of that color is, but the, that dark gray of that theme renders that basically unusable. Um, and further in the mobile view, if you've got a course name which is particularly long in your course menu, it just doesn't really look great. It kind of doesn't look like it's meant to be that way. So these were some of the changes that we started thinking we're going to want to change those things anyway. We also found from obviously looking at the community site um, and seeing what other people have done that you could also use CSS to make certain things better. One of the examples that, that we've come up with is the, uh, it was actually mentioned in, in Brent's talk yesterday about the, the grade center where you've got kind of almost over the top spacing on some of these rows. So you're only fitting six or seven rows of data in the, the screenshot that we've got here. And also the column headings up at the top aren't really defined from the rest of the grade center. But with a little bit of CSS change, you can actually compress those down a bit. And this is something that Brent said will, will now be addressed um, and equally give uh, embolden the, the column headings which just makes it all look a little bit, a little bit better, a little bit clearer. So, um, if you're using the 2016 theme, have you customized it using CSS? Raise your hands. So again, kind of probably a similar number to, uh, to when Matt asked. Sounds like most people who are using it are also doing some CSS changes. So taking a, a bit of a step back, why did we actually want to switch to the 2016 theme in the first place? First of all, we looked at our, our users. So in the last academic year, we had more than 60 combined years of usage of Blackboard um, by our staff and students. And about 20% of that usage was on mobile or uh, tablet devices. And generally, I think that that kind of usage is only going to go up in the future. And the 2016 theme being responsive probably means that those people are going to get a better experience than had we not moved to it. So that was one of the key drivers for us moving over. So back in March, um, our journey began with kind of looking at what we wanted to do. And between then and now, we've made 
28 kind of color or layout changes, a few text formatting changes, uh, and adding some kind of help text customizations. And we've also tweaked some of the buttons and the graphics um, that you can tweak through Drew CSS. So this really is going to be our guide on how we, how we started doing that and how we progressed to not just taking what we saw in the community, but maybe developing it a little bit further. Okay. And of course, we're standing on the shoulders of giants. And we wanted to particularly thank uh, these giants of the Blackboard community who've been posting things up that have helped us a lot. And throughout this presentation, we'll be telling you like the particular people who've helped us out, where you can find the resources on the way. So we really found that you really can fake it until you make it. And this is our four-step process to turn yourself from a bluffer to an innovator. First of all, you need to get your tools sorted and develop a proof of concept, prove that you really can do it. You can make a customized theme, just make one change, upload it, see that it works, and then you can take it from there. As soon as you've got your proof of concept, then you get going. Then you can use examples from the community theme gallery on the Blackboard site. I'll be showing you a bit of that. There's the fantastic community fixes and issues list. Many uh, issues are resolved in that thread. Some of those examples that Sam showed you earlier. And once you've started using those, you'll gain confidence and you actually find that you're able to start to innovate in the theme. We'll be showing you one of the little things that we feel that we've innovated based on um, the practices that we found on the community site, really standing on the shoulders of giants. The first step is to get your tools sorted and make a proof of concept. So you, the, the things that you need to have are all free. You need to have, well, apart from your Blackboard installation, which you need to have system administration access to. You need to have a browser. We tended to use Firefox. Something that you may not have heard of is the Stylus browser add-on, which we'll tell you about in a moment. You'll need a 7-zip, WinZip, some kind of compression tool, text editor, Notepad++. Uh, Esther was telling us that Kate, KDE, advanced text editor is really useful. And you may also want, if you look at the graphics, to use something like Adobe Illustrator. Now, you might not have heard of Stylus before. It was recommended on a community site by Ian Goh and Kevin O'Connor. And it allows you to test CSS customizations live before you've actually uploaded any new theme to your, um, to your Blackboard site. It allows for rapid prototyping, and it's very quick and easy to use. And it's free. Now, here's a demonstration. We've got Blackboard on the uh, left, Stylus on the right. I've just pasted in a CSS setting. I save it and enable it. It sets the background color, and I can change that live using the color picker and instantly see how that's going to look in my Blackboard installation. So rather than compiling it into the zip file, uploading it, changing the settings, setting it all up, you can very quickly take examples that you found on the community site, plug them in via stylus, instantly see, is this going to work? Could we fiddle around with it? And this tool really allowed us to get going very quickly, so we really recommend that. It's also, some people might not be aware what an actual theme file is. It's just a zip file, and it contains CSS files which does affect the behavior and size of certain interface elements. There'll be graphics, fonts, and properties files. And there's one important file. The theme.css file is the first file that's, well, one of the first files that's loaded by Blackboard. And um, it points to lots of the other CSS files that are going to be used. And you can place all of, or almost all of your customizations in one single file that you've referenced in your theme CSS file. And usually, we call that the mod CSS file. So on the community site, you might say, you might see people saying, oh, if you add this to your mod CSS, it will do that. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to get the theme files from Blackboard, extract them, and then open the theme CSS file, add a reference to a mods file, create your mods file, put in a customization, zip it up, and upload it to Blackboard. And it really is simple. And you can see more of this on the full presentation online. 
download your Blackboard theme file, which you can access through the admin panel. Save it. Then you want to extract it, just using your tools like 7-zip or WinZip and so on. Find your theme.css file. Once you've opened that file, you would then create a reference to your mods CSS file. And again, you can see this in much more detail on the full version of the presentation online. Create that mods.css file, which is just like creating a text file and renaming it to .css. You could then add a simple bit of CSS that you've kind of copied from the community site, from the brilliant uh, themes and uh, theme fixes and issues list. Paste it in, save the file, zip it up, and then you can upload that to your Blackboard installation, which you'll see just here. So you're going through the admin panel, brands and themes. First, you upload the theme. So this is the theme catalog. You give it a name, upload the file, select it, submit it. Once you've done that, you can then choose that you want to use this file. So there you can see there's the reference to it. Once you apply it, you'll get a quick preview of how it's going to look. And once you've submitted it, there you go. You can instantly see that that top uh, bar color had changed. Once you've got your proof of concept, you know it's going to work. And you're going to be feeling like Skeletor here. You're going to be like, yeah, I pretty much own the Tower of Grayskull. <laughs> Next, you've, proved, you've done your proof of concept. Go onto the community site, and you can find the community theme gallery. Now, you've probably seen Simon Maciszewski on the community site, but you might not have seen uh, this post. So um, he said that we really think it would be really cool and useful if people could upload examples of their themes. So um, that was a couple of years ago now. And um, so far, three institutions have uploaded a theme to the theme gallery. So we've got the Grand Valley State University theme uploaded by Colleen Cameron, uh, the UIC Learn theme by Simon, and UC San Diego's uh, theme by Alison Sapraski. And in the full version of the presentation, uh, you can find some more details about those. And we reached out to the people that had um, uploaded their themes, and Colleen wrote us some fantastic tips, which we thought we don't really have time to go through them in the presentation now. But when you look at the full presentation, you can see some fantastic tips that uh, Colleen has added. So we'd like to thank her very much. So, has anyone actually looked at the theme gallery? Did you know it existed? Oh, well, now you do. And it is a brilliant example of the Blackboard community helping each other. And on that note, you probably saw Tim Atkins post, Pay It Forward, like share your insights, ideas, and innovations. And in that spirit, we're paying it forward. This week, we uploaded our custom theme into the theme gallery. So you can download it, you can take the little bits that we've added, put them into Stylus, see how it would work with yours, build on it. And because, like these otters, isn't it better to make your way holding hands when you go on a journey? So, successful. Having uh, reviewed those themes, seen some examples, tested those um, settings that people have added, put them into Stylus, check them out, then upload them in your own custom theme, you're really on your way to uh, building the foundation of your theme. The next step is to look at the community fixes list and some other materials. Now, Kevin O'Connor was just sat in front of us here from Trinity, Coblin, uh, Trinity College, Dublin, uh, back in uh, 2018s, so just over a year ago. Kevin started this thread where everyone could start to collate these various uh, fixes that we've been finding and discussing on the community site. And there's more than 40 fixes on there and a lot of great discussion. And you can see this is the, uh, the template that's used for identifying those fixes. Now, the majority of these fixes have been rated to have severity level of medium or high. So if you're going to go about customizing your theme, you really want to look at these because there's some severe issues that you will need to fix. You won't want to go live without having fixed these issues. And you can use a tool like Stylus to check how it works. Am I affected by this issue? Maybe a recent upgrade has resolved this. Do I really need it? So you can test it out. There's a Word document on Google Docs, so you can uh, download the whole set, print it out, go through it with your team. 
while I was using that, I also found there's a lot of other great materials on the community site. And I started a collaborative links list, which is also linked to from Kevin's fantastic thread. So as I was going through the site, I was just making a note of where all of the little extra guides were and putting in links because there's, there's thousands of posts on the community site. It can be a little bit hard to make your way. So I really recommend checking that out as well. And it's collaborative, so you can add further materials to it. Now, Rodney Hargis, who's a senior support and training analyst at Princeton, he wrote a fantastic thread with a fantastic overview of um, how to go about the customization. Uh, in the full presentation, we've broken that down by element so you can look at it. But I'd really recommend having a look at what Rodney's written because it is a fantastic resource. There's also the Blackboard Slack workspace that's recently been announced on the community site. There is a dedicated 2016 theme channel. So that site's for Blackboard admins and developers. So who has posted to the community site about the Blackboard theme? Kevin, you could put your hand up too. So, well, two people, but I know what you're gonna to want to do when you get back to your institutions. You're gonna be on that site, looking at those fixes, finding some better improvements, posting them up, the community coming together in the spirit of awesomeness. Now, Esther has written some amazing blog posts that cover details of some specific elements of theme uh, development. And we're gonna hand over to Esther now to give you a bit of the in-depth science about CSS and customization. So um, for today, uh, what I thought was um, explain you a little bit how CSS works, because it's important to know how it works if you're going to start playing with it. Um, CSS is a cascading style sheet. That means that whatever's loaded last will be prevailing over whatever's loaded before. Um, you can always add important. It's there. Um, but it's a bit complicated to start pulling backwards if you use it too much. So it's something to use with care when needed but not too much. And then um, the more specific rules you do, the, the more they will, um, they will prevail over non -so, not so specific ones. So that's also important if there is something that you cannot change, uh, something that you have already uh, identified, you can always just add one more specific level so that it will always be uh, winning your <laughs> Like your, your rule will win. Then um, I put there a picture, a really nice picture that Matt had found with the anatomy of a CSS rule um, where you can see a selector, a property, and a value. What we are changing are the values, and that's what you need to do. Those pieces of code is what you need to work with when you make your modifications. Again, if you use any code, please test it like a million times before putting it in a, in a production server. And um, I have prepared three parts that I think make a really big improvements into, into the theme, a big impact with the small work. The top bar, the modules pages, and the course menu. Those three pieces are very much wanted to be modified, and it's quite simple once you understand how they are built. So the top bar, it's a collection of divs. There's a big div on the top um, that has several layers inside other divs. Uh, if we want to modify it, we need to work with all the layers. We need to, to um, make different pieces to work together. Sometimes it's going to mean that we need to put something to be transparent to be able to see what's under. There is a couple of examples. On the top we have something that has turned completely red. The one down is a picture but it also has a green bar and a semi-transparent picture on top of it so that you can see a little bit blurred. All this code you can check uh, later. Um, I like using the, the bottom layer to put a picture or a color and then work with the other layers to give some effects to it. Add images or, or logos or, or some other interesting things. Uh, we can change the, the tabs and the logo also. It's really simple. You can move it a little bit more inside so it's not so connected to the corner or to the top. And we can do really nice things with the tabs. Like for example, down there it's gray and when you hover over it, it, it turns into that sand 
color. Then we go to the responsive version. That's a bit, uh, <laughs> bit of a game. The, the logo disappears completely when you go to responsive. So uh, what you can do is to add, add it to this global nav bar wrap so it will show in the, in the top. Some other things we can do that these are just for, for playing. For example, uh, you can do a bigger avatar. You can add a test, uh, a text on the top that says staging server, test server, so that you know where you're working. Sometimes if you're developing, <laughs> you don't know where you're working anymore by looking at the machines, uh, at, the, at the pages. So it's, it's nice to put that sort of text. Uh, you can remove the shadows if you don't like the shadow that shows over the the mic flap or fly out or the logout logo, log out, log, huh. <laughs> log out button. Um, you can remove those shadows so it will look a lot more um, plain. With the modules, you can do many things again. Uh, the background of the page is a container. There's different levels, so you could even use a background really, really on the back and then have one area that shows white where the text will go. Um, and then every one of those modules is built out of three parts. The portless is the complete module. H2 will be the top part. And collapsible is the part where is the information that goes into the module. So we can work the backgrounds by using, for example, one with a background color or a background image in location pane, then content will turn a little square inside that in white. And then we can play with the modules to make them bigger, to make them uh, have a shadow and not a border. Uh, you can round their corners. And um, I got a petition for the My Courses module to be modified so that there would be a little Inten uh, indentation in the in the courses names and that triangle and the course menu uh, which uh, originally was uh, dark gray with uh, white text uh, that turns into violet when it's hovered it's a bit uh, of a quite a big structure again we have uh, again many many levels that you have to to work with to change backgrounds and to change colors uh, the top has the, the action bar, and then in the bottom you have that, that button to, to, to quick enroll. That's part of the, from control panel down, the students don't see it, but the teachers do. So um, it's also nice to, to personalize it. Uh, you can change the control panel color by working with menu wrap. The navigation panel, you will have to play with different, uh, different levels of, of divs. And the action bar micro is going to control what, is, uh, what color is the action bar on the top, the, the little buttons up there. You can also change the buttons so that they are the same color like the background and make, even uh, change the pictures in there. The puller. The puller is something everybody has been a bit uh, complaining about because uh, when, it, uh, when you hide the menu, and especially since the menu hides by itself in 1024 pixels, for some people, it's quite complicated to find. Um, you can change the color. In there, it's, it's painted in red. Uh, nowadays, in the, in the responsive version, it's a ball. It's a circle with an arrow, so it's a bit better than what it was before. And then I made a modified version shaped as a button that you can see how it works on the back. And Matt here has made a modified version of that where it blinks in red, so it's easier to see that the button is there. <laughs> It was great. Um, so we can change the links. We can change the quick enroll. We can change the subheaders, the titles, the course title. You can work every one of those. Uh, by the way, every change that you see here in a code corresponds to the picture that is on its side. And these are some examples of my clients that have decided, I, I work for one of the partners, so I, I handle many, many Blackboard Learns, and I've been doing modifications and personalizations for our clients. So these are some of our clients that have kindly agreed to allow me to show this one. So this is University of Seville, and um, they wanted to have that logo there and the big picture on the back, which has uh, a gray shadow on top, which is built in two layers. The logo is in the third layer with that Enseñanza Virtual uh, text, and then the tabs in two different colors. Also, the modules have been modified to have a little bit 
bigger text as a, as a title. And I think they look really, really clean somehow. Uh, Escuela de Organización Industrial. Again, we have three layers on the top that have been modified. One has the picture, the other one has the, the whitish transparent background, and then we have a green area up, up there on the top. The modules have been rounded. Universidad de Navarra, again, two levels, the black one on the top. I mean, they are two different parts. The, the image is in one layer and the black part is in a different one. They are using the, the square button for the pull-up. Fundación Laboral, they wanted a shadow there uh, to divide the top from the bottom and a big image. These are the responsive versions of two of them. The one there is University of Seville again. So now we see the logo there on the top in the red bar. This other university is only using red and white, so we just change everything red. <laughs> Utah in blues with the logo a lot pushed to the side and, and more down. And the blue menu. And Two. Moving on, success. At this point, we're at a stage where we could uh, continue building our theme using primarily examples from, from the community. Um, and we're kind of resolving all of these bugs and the other annoying issues. And again, primarily copying and pasting stuff that other people had already done, and then putting it in stylus, testing it, and using it in our own environment. Um, we also then knew the right places to, write, to ask the questions of the people that would know the answers to the things that we were still struggling with. At that point, we thought, what can we then do to start innovating to make something that's more our own theme that fits what we want to do at Southampton? And the first way that we started using that, and again, bearing in mind that I know some people in the audience are kind of like CSS gods who would be doing some of this stuff in their sleep. Matt and I had never done CSS before. And we found that the, the quickest, easiest way to start finding stuff out was using this Inspect Element tool. So Inspect Element is just um, an option in most browsers where you can look at the HTML and the CSS of the, the, web, brow the, sorry, the web content, the web page that you're on, and you can affect changes to that up until the point at which you refresh the page. And it's a really useful tool to actually identify the various specific elements in the CSS that you want to um, kind of change. So within a page, if you're on a web page, you can right click anywhere on that web page. So for instance, maybe on a button that you want to change the color of, you can right click and choose inspect element. Uh, and it works better, best if you've got two monitors where you can have, um, on one screen you can have your web page, on the other screen you can have your inspect element. And you'll get this, at first, this slightly confusing looking screen with lots of uh, code on it. But the key bit is that you can really then start to pick out individual elements on that web page to see what the associated CSS is. And again, using the example that Matt used earlier about changing a color, you can start just dragging that color around to see how that affects the specific element that you're working with. Um, so you can see here, we've, we've got that, that tools module. We're then looking at that specific bit of CSS. And this is because we're, we're only doing this um, up until the point at which we refresh that page. We can then copy that bit of code, put it into Stylus, and start developing it more um, to the point where it exists past the point where you refresh the page. So this was the kind of the really quick and dirty way of getting into the CSS and then moving it into Stylus afterwards. We also wanted to look at doing something with some of the graphics and some of the buttons um, in, the, in the theme. One of the things that was identified, I think, on the community site was the, the buttons that you see at the top of the course menu. Now, I appreciate that this is slightly zoomed in, so it's going to look slightly blurry anyway. But we felt that the, the default buttons that you had didn't, didn't really look that clear. And especially things like the add menu item button over on the left there, it's kind of the, the plus symbol with a circle around it. We felt that that could be clearer. And looking into it, we saw that that was just a simple PNG file. So it's a big PNG file with a range of different icons in it. And by taking a copy of that and then putting it into something like Illustrator, 
we could then create our own version of those icons. Some of them you can see I've just blatantly ripped off and copied the, the original Blackboard ones. But there were some, like the, uh, the add menu item, where I decided, well, we can, we can just make that plus sign a little bit bigger. Um, the red grid that you see is just a grid in Illustrator that dictates the, the kind of size of each of those buttons, which is 16 pixels by 16 pixels. And on the end there, we've added a couple of new icons. So with this PNG, you can make that as long as you want and just keep adding different graphics that you can then reference in your CSS. So we found the bit of CSS which references um, that PNG for the various different buttons that you might want to change. And we noticed that by fiddling with the, uh, the number, you can start shifting which image within that larger PNG it shows. Now, I do have to say that we're not really using a smiley face as our course map button. Um, but we found that by moving it across to 256 pixels, we can have the standard one being the smiley face. And then we, when we hover over it, it turns to the, the lower part of the image. Um, so you can see the lower half of that PNG is like the rollover button that you get. So that's how we went about actually changing some of those, uh, some of those icons. So has anyone else customized their Blackboard icons? Good, so a few people. We then started looking at um, building on what other people had done. I'll go through these quite quickly because Esther's already, already touched on some of these. Um, so we've got the, the puller that hides and shows the course menu. We had loads of tickets from students um, where that had automatically hidden that menu and they couldn't for the life of them work out how to get it back. So they were raising tickets saying, all I've got is um, my announcements. I can't see any other content. Esther, of course, as she's already said, made a great little puller where she's, she's moved it up to the top of that menu. And we then went one step further than that. We tried to kind of, kind of change what Esther had done to make it work better for Southampton. So we kept it fairly kind of innocuous, a fairly bland shade of... Uh, kind of cream so that it's not obvious when you don't particularly need to use it. But if you happen to be on a smaller screen or you resize your window and the, the course menu hides, it then just pulses every four seconds in red. So that the, the student or the member of staff is always thinking, what, what's that red thing up there? Oh, that's, that's how I make that menu pop back out again. So that's great. Using Inspect Element, um, doing some further investigation you can find all sorts of tweaks that maybe the community hasn't picked up and maybe things that you just want to do for yourself. But you've got the limits of your own time that you've got available. We're doing our upgrade in June, so we've got kind of deadlines that we need to meet. And you've also got obviously your design skills, the bugs that you have to work with that are in the existing theme, and of course your patience. The downsides, it'd be great if we didn't have to spend time fixing those bugs in the first place and we could concentrate on like, the, the basic design stuff that we want to do. And also the, the kind of butterfly effect of making a change in one place, and then maybe a day later you're, you're testing something else, and you find that the button has changed in a completely different part of Blackboard because it's linked to the same bit of code as the button you changed yesterday. And of course, every time there's an upgrade, um, you need to review your customizations, and there's the potential that you're making a lot more work for yourself into the future. Okay, over to Matt. So, what are some remaining issues that we've not been able to fix that we hope that Blackboard will be fixing soon? Because we're continuing on our journey, it's endless, we just keep driving forwards. So um, there's more details in the full version of the presentation, but the, uh, the cog doesn't work in mobile view. You have to flip to portrait mode or to landscape, and then it will start working. The, uh, when you have a multiple choice question, the, in mobile view, the possible answers are in the, they're out of line with the, uh, the answers of the radio buttons, aren't in line with the text. Some people have posted up their fixes, but none of them have worked for us. Also, when you have a lot of content on the screen, when you put out the menu in mobile view, you just get nothing. You have to go up to see the menu. So the, uh, the button to reveal the menu is always present, but if you've got a lot of content and you're at the bottom of the screen, when you press the, uh, the icon to, to bring the menu out, there's nothing there. Like, 
why would we go live with that? But we haven't been able to fix it yet, so we really hope that we can find a fix to that soon, because this is the kind of thing where when our students and staff are using it, they think, why are you, put, why are you inflicting this on us? What's, what's that all about? What's going on? I don't know. So we really want to fix that. We've also got a few implementation tips that we've, uh, you can find more details of on the full version. But when you implement the new theme, you'll probably want to reset all of your course colors so that anyone that's been using themes previously can get gracefully reset to a standard, which they can then choose the colors that they want. Because you'll also want to disable the old course themes option. And you probably want to prevent instructors from being able to select buttons. Because um, it's still possible to select them, but it won't work. So you want to hide that. You can use CSS to hide that option. In conclusion, you really can fake it until you make it. Get your tools ready, make a proof of concept, use the theme gallery, have a look at our theme that we've uploaded, rip it off blatantly, change your colors and like the padding, make it look good for you, review the fixes list, keep posting back your questions, your tips, you can stand on the shoulders of giants. As you gain confidence, once you get started, you really find actually, yeah, I can do this. I, often we don't quite know what the code means, but we can see what it does. We can see what happens when we change the variables in Stylus. So we've been able to develop this from nothing in the space of two months. So this is just one example. This is a course in the 2012 theme. This is that same course with the default 2016 theme. And this is how we've got things looking now. A bit cleaner, a bit less space up here, a little bit of drop shadow so the menu comes out. Got our adjusted puller and so on, so that although our, our customers won't really see all of the effort that's gone into this, uh, they would certainly be uh, telling us about it if we had just gone live with the default uh, settings. So I'd just like to thank uh, these colleagues from Blackboard who have helped make this talk possible. So to Sharon, to Alistair, to Nathan, to Andy, and particularly to Emma, who's really helped us out to organize this talk. You can continue the conversation. We've got a thread about the talk on the community site. You can also find that presentation online. There's lots of, on that page, you can find all of the links. So you can find um, all of the things that we've talked about, both the full version and the abridged version of this presentation. Uh, I'm not sure what the time is, whether we've got any time for questions, but does anyone want to throw any questions out there? Mind's blown? Yes. Yeah, so the question was, what about the Ultra theme? So this was about the original experience, but it's brilliant that you should ask that question because Esther, I don't know if it's okay if I ask you to mention this idea that Esther had been having about something to do on the community site. So would you mind if I ask you to talk about that? Yeah, I was thinking this morning because at the moment the Ultra, uh, you can choose the coordinating color and that's about uh, in, in means of colors that you can modify. And I was thinking it would be great if we could get uh, some sort of uh, um, form where to add, um, this is gray, the, the dark gray menu. So add your color. This is the violet. Put your, col your color code. Three, four colors that I use in Ultra and be able to change all of those. Save and have the ultra, just, just in colors. I don't think it makes much sense to change anything else because the idea with ultra is that it works in every device and if we start changing paddings and margins and buttons and this and that, then there's going to be really awful things floating around on the net. But at least the colors I think would be great. And in a way that when you change the violet to red, it's going to be changed in every single place where the violet is visible. So um, I'm going to post a, about that in the community, and I would really love if everyone has ideas about that uh, thing, and then maybe somebody listens. Now that there's so many of them. <laughs> uh, if we have time for another question. Well, you can find all of the materials online, go.sotten.ac.uk slash bb, both the full and abridged versions of this presentation. And in the spirit of the otters, I'd like to say thank you for your patience, for spending the lunchtime with us. Check out the community site and enjoy the rest of your conference. Thank you.